welcome to The Real Fake News. I'm your host, Jesse Bertel. Today I will discuss propaganda and the war machine in a little game I call Real Fake News. Let's play Real Fake News. In real news, war is cool. Just ask Jonah Hill and Miles Teller. They call guys like us war dogs. Bottom feeders who make money off of war without ever stepping foot on the battlefield. It was meant to be derogatory, but we kind of liked it. Sorry, Excuse kind me. of an emergency. Sorry, don't worry, I have to go first, I'm American. Looks like a great movie, and the best part is it's a true story. The New York Times reported, guns, money, Iraq, and then a screenplay for war dogs. That sounds awesome. I'm a screenwriter, tell me more. Hustling their way to the American dream, based on a true story. Find your hustle. Now that sounds fantastic. It's true, the American dream is all about hustling these days. So how can I profit from war? New War Dogs trailer suggests funding the American dream with machine guns. Great, sign me up. Let's get started. Step one, quit your day job and start selling weapons to the government. We were tad concerned with your performance history against a deal of this size. But after meeting you two face to face, we feel like we're in good hands on this one. We won't let you down, sirs. Step two, get lots of guns. You drove these through the triangle of death. We drive through all triangles, including your mom's. Step three, do lots of cocaine and hang out at strip clubs while the money comes rolling in. David, we're gun runners. Let's go run some guns. I got a Glock, pop, pop, get rich or die trying. Oh, sorry. Let's play again. In fake news, the Pentagon has been funding propaganda for so long, it's become a huge franchise. From World War II documentaries, Yellow journalism in the Spanish-American War, where a war with Cuba was manufactured by publisher and newspaper owner William Randolph Hearst, in which he famously told reporters when they didn't find a war to report, you furnish the pictures and I'll furnish the war, and has expanded to production of video games. According to NBC, the Pentagon and CIA enlist video games. And Hollywood blockbusters, here are some films funded by the Pentagon. 11 Hollywood Pentagon propaganda films released since 2001. I've seen some of those. Salon reports, the Pentagon's strengthening grip on Hollywood. The war franchise, manufacturing wars for any occasion. Want to make money on incarcerating minorities? War on drugs. Want to start a war of ideology? War on terror. War sells weapons to governments on both sides. Profits don't pick sides. War sells audiences to corporations. Yes, and now that you have that pesky war to deal with, the media can manufacture a cure for any war. Is there a war on women? Sure, why not? We can fix that with a woman war hawk president. War on Christmas, you say? The media's got the cure. And I encourage you all to go shopping more. You can sell any load of crap with the right advertising. Let's play again. In real news, the Pentagon is missing trillions of dollars. According to Reuters, the U.S. Army fudged its accounts by trillions of dollars, auditor finds. Trillions of dollars? I wonder how many homeless Americans that could help. 
What exactly does one spend trillions of dollars on anyway? Employees at the Department of Defense racked up nearly $100,000 on government credit cards at strip clubs. Oh, great. Almost a million was spent at casinos. This is all according to a new report. The most shocking part, no one was held accountable for it because this spending was allowed. The report says the Department of Defense has less money available for work-related travel expenses and experienced potential national security vulnerability. Let's play again. In fake news, according to Tell Sir, U.S. loses hundreds of thousands of guns in Iraq and Afghanistan. Well, that probably accounts for a few million, but where did the rest of the trillions go? Motherboard reports, the trillion dollar stealth jet that government can't seem to finish. Well, now we're getting somewhere, but there's still trillions of dollars unaccounted for. I wonder how much is spent on propaganda. According to Fox News, the Pentagon spending billions on PR to sway world opinion. Only billions? Politico reports, administration fights to protect secret propaganda budget. It's a well-kept secret. Most people don't know that the government invests their tax dollars in propaganda. According to Sot.net, Pentagon propaganda, freedom of information request reveals vast government influence on movies, television, and video games. But propaganda isn't limited to media. According to the Huffington Post, Pentagon paid up to $6.8 million of taxpayer money to pro sports teams for military tributes. Woo! Yeah! Go team! Yeah! Oh, man, I drank too much. Maybe I should join the military and straighten out my life. Become a hero instead of being a drunken loser. Nah, let's play again. In real news, it's not just the general public that is victim to propaganda brainwash. The nobility of warrior's narrative also affects military personnel. In 2014, CNN reported, Former soldier at center of murder of Iraqi family dies after suicide attempt. Poor soldier. I thought he was supposed to kill people. Why did he commit suicide? According to the LA Times, soldier convicted in rape murder of Iraqi girl is found hanged. Oh, he was convicted of rape. Yeah, sex criminals don't do well in prison. Why does it seem like the real news is leaving something out? Maybe we should play again. In fake news, in 2010, the Daily Mail quoted this same soldier in a headline. I didn't think of Iraqis as humans, says the U.S. soldier, who raped a 14-year-old girl before killing her and her family. Not human? Like animals? So you would rape and torture your dog or pet hamster? Where do you draw the line? Should we feel bad for him, as the media wants us to, because it's his job to kill people? War or not, there's no excuse for raping a young girl, lighting her on fire, and brutally murdering her entire family. Should we feel sorry for him because his experience in prison was so bad that he committed suicide? Absolutely not. He's a scumbag and deserved his fate. However, this does point to a serious flaw in a system that puts people in an environment of death and hatred and teaches them to think of their victims as less than human. Is it any wonder that this kind of thing is happening? Even if it happens once in an unjust war, it proves that we are on the wrong side of history. Let's play again. In real news, remember when ISIS was our enemy? ISIS is bad, but Syrian President Bashar al-Assad is so much worse. We should focus on him instead. According to CNN, Obama's Syria dilemma. Does hurting ISIS help al-Assad? Quick, let's bomb something! Uh, how about Syria? Sounds Muslim enough? Let's play again. In fake news, the anti-media reports 10 facts the mainstream media won't tell you about the war in Syria. Number 5. Former Apple CEO is the son of a Syrian refugee. Number 4. ISIS arose out of the US invasion of Iraq, not the Syrian conflict. Number three, Turkey, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia wanted to build a pipeline through Syria, but Assad rejected it. A pipeline, you say? What better reason to start a war than access to more oil? Assad is against building a pipeline. What does that remind me of? Something I just read in the LA Times. With echoes of Wounded Knee, tribes mount prairie occupation to block North Dakota pipeline. Oh, that. Interesting side note. Number two. Leaked phone calls show Turkey provides ISIS fighters with expensive medical care. 
And number one, Western media's main source for the conflict is a t-shirt shop in Coventry, England. Oh, it's too much. It's giving me a headache. Syria is so complex. Whenever I need help grasping these more difficult issues, I turn to Ankur Patel at the Real Fake News Desk for answers in a little segment I call Ask Ankur. Hey, Ankur, what should we know about Syria? Thanks, Jesse. And you're right. The war in Syria is complicated. What started out as pro-democracy protest five years ago during the Arab Spring has devolved into a civil war with lots of outside influence. Hundreds of thousands of people have been killed, millions have been forced to refugee status, and governments have spent billions of dollars on purveying violence in that area of the world. Greater Syria, for over a thousand years, has been geopolitically crucial for powerful civilizations, global empires, and caliphates. And even though Judaism, Christianity, and Islam all claim the same biblical literature as related to an all-powerful being, as you know, there are quite a few different denominations, sects, and belief systems. So religious conflict is a part of it, from crusades to jihad, but recognize the colonizer's role in drawing lines that created nations, and how the Arab world came apart as reported by the New York Times magazine. So depending on your perspective, bias, and objectives, you might believe the Guardian's reporting that Sunni Shia sectarianism is at the root of Middle East violence. Or you might question the myth of the 1400-year Sunni Shia war, like Al Jazeera. Or you might see the five-year Syrian conflict as a proxy war, as reported here. But you might see war as an extension of politics and a natural result of competition for finite resources in a capitalist economic system. Taking a step back, the role of an ally and enemy in a conflict can change sharply with time. According to the LA Times, in Syria, militias armed by the Pentagon fight those armed by the CIA. And when you add Kurds fighting for an independent state, Russian and Iranian self-interest, Turkey's porous border, the still-failing Iraqi and Afghan states, the British Empire, American neocolonialism, and of course the Islamic State, things get even more complicated. It becomes difficult to differentiate between existential threats, empty rhetoric, or propaganda from the war machine. The US narrative on Syria pushes for the use of military action to remove Bashar al-Assad and hold elections in Syria, elections that the United States will undoubtedly stay neutral in. However, the counter-narrative has been bolstered by WikiLeaks run by Julian Assange. They published 390,000 reports called the Iraq War Logs that document the war and occupation in Iraq from 2004 to 2009, as told by soldiers in the United States Army in SIGACT, or Significant Action Reports. They detail events as seen and heard by the U.S. military troops on the ground in Iraq and are the first real glimpse into the secret history of the war that the United States government has conducted. Now this is similar to how the United States war in Vietnam was exposed in the Pentagon Papers. This report details 109,000 deaths in Iraq, comprised of 66,000 civilians, 24,000 enemy insurgents, 15,000 Iraqi government forces, and 3,771 friendly forces. The Afghan war diaries covering the same period about detail the deaths of some 20,000 people. The scale of violence is one thing. The lies, manipulation, and bad journalism that led us to war in Iraq is another. But the consequences of mass destruction in Syria and beyond demonstrate why war is good for absolutely nothing. And the so-called real news has you watching warmongers talking about more violence as the solution. Warmongers have used propaganda to turn any enemy of the state into a barbarian. War is the extension of politics, bad politics. Okay, thanks. And if we continue to allow this bad politics, Ankur. the politics of war, it's death, and destruction. It's too much, Ankur. We need to challenge that. Thanks. In the media. Ankur, thank you. At the ballot box. Okay. With our tax dollars. Thank you. Ankur Patel. Speaking of Julian Assange, there are a lot of misconceptions out there. So here's a clip from a video that WikiLeaks released. Yeah, man. 
That was one of the very first clips that WikiLeaks released, almost when the civil war in Syria started. This is the clip that shows US military air force killing a Reuters journalist, showing that telling the truth is a crime, punishable by execution by the United States of America. Encore. And sometimes children too. I mean, they even gunned down the people who are picking up the bodies. Okay, you had your turn. Let's just watch this WikiLeaks clip of snipers gunning down journalists. Please let me shoot something. I don't think we hit any kids. Yeah, did that tank just run over a journalist? Sweet. <laughs> wow, that is one intense video game. What do you mean it's not a video game? It's not? Well, it's not my fault. The military told me to do it. I know I didn't have to enjoy it so much, but what do you expect me to do? I'm only human. They should give Julian Assange a Medal of Honor for releasing this. Let's play again. In real news, Julian Assange is a terrorist. High-tech terrorist. Cyber terrorist. And information terrorism. Shut it down. We're gonna hang you. Use a drone or something. A bullet in the brain. Illegally shoot the son of a b uh, Information warfare is warfare. And Julian Assange is engaged in warfare. Information terrorism, which leads to people getting killed, is terrorism. And Julian Assange is engaged in terrorism. He should be treated as an enemy combatant, 
WikiLeaks should be closed down permanently and decisively. Should the United States do something to stop Mr. Assange? We're looking at that right now. The Justice Department is taking a look at that. I would argue that it's closer to being the high-tech terrorist than the, than the Pentagon Papers. This disclosure is not just an attack on America's foreign policy interests. It is an attack on the international community. <laughs> uh, clearly I'm in the wrong profession. Good thing I'm not a real journalist. I'm just telling jokes, see? Information terrorism, uh, how Orwellian. I learned about this as a graduate student of journalism, but I doubt that most people know that this video even exists, or that this is why Julian Assange is now considered an enemy of the United States. The real fake news correspondent, Catherine Grant, took to the streets to find out what average people think about Julian Assange. Hey Jesse, this is Katie Grant coming at you from beautiful sunny Colorado, although we are in the shade right now. Um, I'm going to be conducting some man on the street interviews, even though I'm a lady, to just see what people think about Julian Assange. Do you know who Julian Assange is? No. Do you know who Julian Assange is? No. Do you know who Julian Assange is? Yes. Do you think he's a hero or is he an enemy of the state? Mm, I think that's a very complicated question. I don't know what to think of him. Sometimes I think he's heroic and sometimes I think he's a jerk. Do you think that he's a hero or an enemy of the state? I think it's a little bit more complicated than that. Probably both. Do you think he's a hero or an enemy of the state? I haven't decided yet. He's not my favorite guy right now. Well, to me, a hero, if you could get inside his head, he's basically up to no good. But might we benefit from what he's doing? Yeah, it's possible. Why do you think he's up to no good? Um, well, because, because of the unauthorized way he went about uh, hacking information. It's hard to get authorization to hack information. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Isn't he the guy who uh, does the WikiLeaks? Uh, who is he? WikiLeaks. I, I'm not sure who Julian Assange is, though. So if you can. Who is that? Yeah. Who is Julian Assange? Um, he founded WikiLeaks. Okay, well, so he's the one who founded it. <laughs> Do you know what WikiLeaks is? What weekend it is? Great job, Katie. It's interesting that so many people are uninformed about such an important issue. Let's play one more time. In fake news. Today I talked with Officer Jay about some things having to do with the military industrial complex. We're here today talking to Jay Peck, who's a career military. He did four tours of Vietnam. And the and, governor. And he worked in the governor's office here in Colorado and also was special forces for many years. So do you know what WikiLeaks is? Yes, I know what WikiLeaks is. WikiLeaks has the ability to try to bring information that is not available any other place to public light. And they do this by gathering the information from a host of whistleblowers, uh, indirect or direct means, and they are probably the only form of truthful, unbiased uh, information that's available. How it's used may not be truthful, but the, but the weak leaks are genuinely uh, more valid than what you read in the New York Times, for example. What is your take on the military response to WikiLeaks? As long as it is not their agenda that's being leaked. Let's be very old selfish about it. They could care less. They are aware that these things are going on. They have their own hackers. And if it sometimes it's to their advantage, whatever their advantage is they're looking at, to have a WikiLeak at the right time and the right place. So you've heard about the Apache fire incident. WikiLeaks covered this, they, they leaked it, the, the footage. Um, so this guy was laughing about it. He was really enjoying killing these civilians. What gets a person to that point where they can commit such an inexcusable act? People do get off on hurting people. There was laughter, there was giggling, and there was goofing off. I'll tell you, it was not all sad because you cover your sadness with laughter. I think comedy is a, a wonderful way of covering up 
your the, the issues of your own conscious conscience and um, uh, you make light uh, you call it gallows humor and uh, it works you desensitize yourself to the issue you change your internal priorities so that you can continue to function the rest of the day laugh about it Ha, 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 I only did this or that or the other awful thing. Well, maybe tomorrow it'll be a better day. All right, back to you, Jesse. That's very interesting, Katie. Thank you for providing that report, and I look forward to more reports from you in the future. <laughs> Catherine Grant. It's important that we educate ourselves on the issues that have been reframed for our consumption. As Dr. Paul Craig Roberts said in his article, The Genocide of a Land, become informed while you still can. Propaganda is turning truth-tellers into conspiracy theorists and domestic extremists. We can't take the continued presence of truth-tellers for granted when one appears support him or her. Last year, I spoke with Amy Goodman, host of Democracy Now! about the importance of independent media. Public radio, television, internet, fighting hard to open up the public spaces where you don't have to pay to play. I actually read a study that a group watching shows like The Daily Show and Bill Maher versus a group watching mainstream news. We were able to retain the information better than the group watching the actual news. And in fact, the news group were losing knowledge. That's they right. Was they were less informed. They were, yeah, and the people who were watching Fox were the least informed. What, what do you think that says about news? Because it's inaccurate. And it is bringing you such a small, such a narrow range of opinion. For example, when we're talking about war, there are many generals, there are many people in the military who are deeply concerned about going to war. When they express those concerns, they are not the ones who are invited on. Joseph Campbell saw new media technologies as an opportunity to educate the masses with a new universal myth that could teach us all how to be the heroes in our own lives. But his theories have been hijacked and twisted to reflect a manufactured narrative that doesn't represent human nature. Who's to blame for the mass genocide that we as a nation are all a part of? Who should be in jail? Soldiers who are subjected to the horrors of war with blood on their hands? Officers and generals who condone the behavior of soldiers, who cover up their actions and continue to operate in positions of power and influence in a war zone? Or should we hold accountable those politicians, the elected officials, who continuously vote to fund the war machine, supporting its propaganda and the violent ideology and rhetoric that war breeds? Or should we lock up the journalists, who lie to us and gently feed us poisonous ideas. The mainstream media keeps the general population complacent and apathetic through manufactured consent. The real fake news is the antidote to the media brainwash. And that's the real fake news. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to my Walking Eye TV channel on YouTube. Real fake, real fake, real fake, real fake news. The Real Fake News is brought to you in part through the generous support from viewers like you. If you like this program and would like to see more programs like these, please show your support by clicking on the support button on my Walking Eye TV page on YouTube and donating any amount. You can also show your support by donating at GoFundMe.com slash Media Revolution. You can like us on Facebook.com slash The Real Fake News and follow us on Twitter.com slash Real Fake News 1.